blessed be the name of the Lord. I give you my regards and I send, sending my regards from from Mother Church that I am from and may the name of the Lord be exalted. I want to thank again the Lord from uh, th at this stage. Firstly, uh, this summer, this summer we had a huge responsibility. As many of you know, we had the Christian camp. We had many ki kids. We had about 550 people. And I want to thank the Lord because He guarded us from uh, issues and troubles. And that was the best and most important thing of all. And the second of all was that our Lord did not l leave us wandering, but He visited many children. Many children were baptized, receiving the uh, the talents of the Spirit. And of course, I want to thank this church for helping out in this huge work because it's not just one person working your children gave the very best when it came to serving the children and I want to say that we need to praise the Lord for these children either they worked as camp leaders as team leaders or they were one one of the one of your children that were in the camp as a camp as campers and I was praying please Lord because when I'm uh, amongst children I become a child myself and because we know that the uh, kingdom of heavens is for the children because I'm a child because I am amongst children let the rapture be at those days but we thank the Lord because today I want to because I do believe that this very church is the home of people that have in their hearts the will the willfulness to go to eternal life and enjoy the presence of the Lord. And therefore we can say that this very church is the preparatory room for eternal life. And I just want to talk about this. I'm going to read a few verses from Matthew. That will be chapter 9 and verse 35 until 38. Matthew chapter 9, 35 until 30, 38. And Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into, the, into his harvest. Amen. We are now talking about the gospel of eternal life. As we know, and it is written that Jesus was going around cities teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom the good message of eternal life. Of course, I'm not able to remember and I'm also not able to fathom this kingdom. What does exactly eternal life and eternal kingdom means? Apostle Paul now says, and he will proclaim himself, that I went up to the third sky and I saw things that I'm not able and I have no human words to describe them with. But who amongst us can understand the kingdom? What exactly is the kingdom that God is referring to? 
how is this kingdom going to be like if our Lord said that I'm telling you the things of this earth and you better be believing in these things because if I say to you things of heavens if you're not able to believe the small things that I'm teaching about it now how would you be able to understand the things that I'm talking about about heavens that is why now we are talking about the good message of eternal life and when the Lord received this very message from God because Father himself delivered that message to Christ and in a different part in the Bible the Lord underlines it saying that I give to you and I'm teaching exactly what the Lord my, my father taught me and that is the good message that was given to me by God and he came in the, the, the simplest of ways that is to teach us about the kingdom of heavens and as he went through all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues and this word from the Lord came down to earth through Christ the word of the Lord says that it, he, it was he was able to heal every disease and every affliction and this is what the gospel is doing when it comes into the life of a person when that sermon and that teaching that is from Christ comes in the life of a person it heals and it heals every disease and every affliction and the Lord wanted to show them that what he was preaching was the power of Christ was the power of God rather and Apostle Paul is going to describe that and he's going to tell us in, the Ro in Romans the first chapter and we're going to read it Romans chapter 1 he says that I'm not ashamed of this gospel and he's not ashamed of it because he knows that I this gospel is the power for s to, to salvation to all believers therefore the first thing that the person is receiving when he hears the word of the Lord is he is power from above and that power from God can set this person free he can set and him free from his bounds that is why nothing is able to stand in front of the eyes of the Lord no one can say that this is impossible and what we just read was from uh, verse 16 in chapter 1 remember Martha, Martha and Mary as they are in front of uh, Lazarus deathbed with Christ when the Lord is going to say to the people remove the rock in front of the uh, tomb the tomb they're going to say to him that it's going to smell because he's now dead for four days and now the Lord himself said to to Mary and to Martha didn't I tell you that if you believe you're gonna see the power of the Lord therefore when the gospel is coming into our lives for it to become power we need to accept it w you need to accept it in your life that holy word needs to be accepted that is why Paul said, uh, says I'm not ashamed of the gospel and I'm preaching it and I'm talking about Christ everywhere I stand because I know because when people need to listen but from the moment someone accepts the word the Lord will open up his heart and then Paul knows surely that the power of Christ is going to come in and one word from Christ cannot be 
cannot be outdone and no one can remain against it stand against that word that is why in front of those two women Martha and Mary Christ is gonna call out Lazarus come out only the gospel can resurrect a soul because the gospel is the power that can first of all save a person it comes in your life and it will outdo the life it will turn your life upside down and the person can now say that I was dead but now I'm alive how can this be done by reading the word of the Lord by listening the words that come from the heavens that is why Paul is not ashamed of the gospel and we should not be ashamed of it either we should not be ashamed to exalt the name of the Lord and many times we are ashamed and we are thinking of it twice how am I supposed to say this in what way if I don't can and if I do can I stand those who are gonna mock me in front of you you have someone who's about to be dead who is dead spiritually dead and only you can give this person a solution only you can give this person can lift the rock that is on him on his shoulders from that moment on he will listen to the voice of the Lord and this is done this can be done that is why Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel because he himself knows from his own experience how it changed his own life and he knows that it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes that is why in the righteousness God is revealed from faith from faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith it's not found but it's revealed because God is opening up and it is illum he's illuminating in the heart of a person if we are here today for a reason that reason is Christ if we are here today and we exalt Christ it's because he wanted it because we st we f we stand in front of him we stood in front of him once and we said that we want you in our lives and God provided his mercies in our life because he is the gods of he the God of mercy that is why the gospel says that I don't want the death of a person but his repentance is it easy for someone to repent and live is it easy for a person to change the way of living his way of living and we are now let us talk about simple things a simple thing that I remembered was smoking when I first heard the gospel of the Lord my father-in-law spoke to me about how the Lord freed him for smoking and I had a person in front of me that had experiences with the Lord and he told me that I prayed to the Lord and I saw a dream I said what kind of a dream and he said I saw a knife that was able to cut from both sides and the next morning I didn't want to smoke and I liked it and I said the same thing please Lord give me show me a dream and the packet with the cigarettes was next to me please show me a dream and I was smoking I would rise up in the morning and I was saying the same thing I'm waiting for a dream as as up until the moment I've read that the gospel is the one who's able to heal you and I said I'm gonna start r reading the gospel does this book uh, have the power does this book has a power can this book have the power to set me free is the word that I'm reading able to come into my heart and I've read and I was reading and reading and one moment I 
I said that I'm not going to eat anything today and I'm continue and I'll continue on reading and I did this until uh, noon and I left and I went to pick up my now wife we went to the church and I came back and I w didn't want to smoke simple why because it's the power of the Lord it's not my power because I don't have the power to change you I don't have the strength to change your own life for you to make you change your life I don't have that power I cannot do that what happens in my life and your life is the divine power of Christ that is why the workers of the gospel are telling us that we need to read the word of the Lord a verse can change your life a verse can change your life and turn it upside down and the word of the Lord now says that Apostle Paul the word of the Lord says through Apostle Paul rather because I want to read from uh, different verses the Apostle Paul now knowing what happened in his own life he has one big desire and that desire is to run and proclaim what happened in, what happened in his life of course he's going to tell us that dear brothers I did not receive the gospel from people but after revelation from Christ that means that Christ came into my life into his life and he revealed his word to him isn't that beautiful and sometimes I'm hearing brothers or some souls speaking to me and saying where is that written and I'm saying don't you have a God that can listen to you a God you can pray to and he can reveal to you things from within the word of the Lord and now Paul says that I received this gospel and I am running who is doing nothing else and he's doing nothing else rather than give that truth to someone else for this word and this light to illuminate to other peoples because this is what we're doing when we are giving away gospels and uh, Bibles rather light is coming into the life of people do you want the light to come into a household give them a Bible speak about the love of Christ speak about the word of the Lord immediately the th things will change darkness will depart and we're gonna see it later as we take the word of the Lord therefore there's only one thing remaining that word that acted in Paul's life for him to illuminate and give it to someone else and pass it on to someone else and he's gonna say to the Corinthians the gospel that I taught you the gospel that you received the gospel you are remaining into and onto you didn't just take it but you are standing on it and you are standing in uh, spiritually on it and as and as Peter used to say read the word of the Lord so that you may become wise believe in the gospel so you may be saved experience gospel the gospel so that you may become holy trust on the gospel so that you may be kept by the Lord until the last day and you may receive eternal life and indeed the gospel can be can make someone wise when we read the word of the Lord we're not just doing it for us to have an understanding or be wise but for us to know how to walk properly because we need to walk we receive the gospel and now we need to look at it we need to read it we need to eat it if I may say that 
I have to experience it. I have to stand and place myself on it. And now you're standing on it, says the word of the Lord. And when you do so, let us know that he will never lose his way. Because it is the only way and the only path that would lead to the gospel of eternal life. And Paul says that I've given you this gospel that you are standing on and you're believing and through which you are being saved because the gospel can set someone free and because the gospel can save someone. And remember the way that I taught you because the specific way that Paul taught this gospel and if you remember that way and if you believe and you keep on believing and you don't think that you believe in vain therefore we need to take this word and receive this word that the first thing that word will do is that it will set you free when Christ was moving and going through the villages he was healing every affliction and every disease and we are thanking the Lord because we've experienced that the Lord came into our lives and we experienced that is that enough that's just the beginning now what do we need we need to take and receive this word we need to stand and remain and as I said to our church I said I would be glad if all of us as a church I'm gonna tell you this exactly as I told them I want us to dive in dive in the gospel let us take its its other's hands and let us try and walk according to the gospel and we may find different people in the Old or in the New Testament so we can start from the Old Testament and find Moses. Let us reach out and say to Moses, imaginary now, dear brother Moses, for him to look at you, for you to look at him, and ask him, what did you do? And he will reply simply by saying, but that dear, I refuse to be called the son of the queen and I would and I preferred to be in affliction with the people of Israel rather than experience the temporary sin because I considered the affliction that is in exalting Christ bigger than the treasures in Egypt and he will look at you and he will say to you what did you sacrifice what did you disregard what are you going to say to him the word of the Lord came into my life and I was reborn and I was baptized and I was healed yes but all these things are gifts that are coming from Christ to us but what did you sacrifice and what did you s disregard how are you standing? How are you walking? How am I working? Because he disregarded the wealth that is in the Egypt and he turned away from what many people would run and they would bargain to receive and that is the wealth, the money, the glory Therefore, he told them that there is no gospel of, of wealth, but there is only one gospel, and that is the gospel of Christ. And if we continue on, all of us, how can you walk? Do you want to go and find Daniel? Who are you going to find? Let us even go to the New Testament, if you are a woman. maybe you go to greet Mary Magdalene 
before you even reach out, look at her. Look at her. Can you dive in so that your life can walk into the gospel and s actually see if you are standing to exactly the standards that the skies and heavens gave to you? You are being saved, says the words of the Lord. If you keep the word that I gave to you, then the gospel will be power to you for salvation to everyone who believes, in Romans, says Paul. But you have to do it in the way I taught you and the way you received it. That holy word of the Lord because it is very important, my dear brethren. And you know, when Paul continues on, and he has anxiety, not regarding whether or not the word of the Lord is uh, alive or true, and we know it is true, and it is able to cut better than the two-edged sword, and it is able to cut in your life and cut things off, set you setting you free. Therefore, the anxiety that the person of the Lord has, Apostle Paul in this case, the best and the greater sinner, someone who, someone who said and proclaimed that I'm not worthy of being called an apostle, for you to say, hi, Brother Paul. He will tell you where you're from. You will say that I'm a Christian. And he will say to you, I see. That's a big name to carry on. The name Christian is a special name. Let us be aware of it. It's not for anyone who wishes to, to say this name. In Antioch, the disciples were called Christians. And Christian means, means that you are Christ's because you live for Christ. And that is the gospel of salvation. What do you do, Paul, you may ask? He will say to you, he will say to you that what was good and for advantage, advantageous for me, I thought of it as being disadvantageous. I was taught by Gamaliel I had a glorious life ahead of me. I could do many things with my life. I could be successful in this life and be glorious and big in a, with a big name. But I received the commandment from Christ and that was to preach my word. And I did so. And I would and I believe that everything that I had before it was for a was disadvantage were disadvantageous for me in front of the word of the Lord. And maybe if I was to see him, Apostle Paul that is, my eyes would be standing very low or looking very very low. I would be looking down because it would be a blasphemy for me to try and compare myself with Apostle Paul, someone who disregarded everything so that he can live with the one that loved them and him. But now he's anxious. Therefore, that gospel of the kingdom and and this year's camp uh, the brothers came and they saw them in an on a night with the uh, telescope they saw them the uh, the stars they saw them the moon and and they told them about all the different things that are existing in the universe and the kids with uh, curiosity they were observing and 
Then they stood up and they sung, looking up at the sky, a Greek hymn that was praising the Lord, saying, Oh Lord, I'm looking at your creations and I'm amazed. And now the love of Apostle Paul is so great that uh, someone may say that you are becoming too much. The way you're putting things down, the way you are saying, the way you're preaching, someone may say become more elastic, let's say in your words, become more, don't be so strong minded. And I'm amazed that Apostle Paul says that you are driven away from the gospel I gave you to a different gospel quickly. And there's a gospel, and that gospel is not, is no different, but there are others that are trying to mislead you and change the gospel of uh, eternal life. Because the gospel of Christ will lead us to eternal life. We're going to be saved. If we keep that gospel, and we are standing and putting ourselves on that gospel, and there are some people, Apostle Paul says, that are trying to mislead you. They're trying to drive you away. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get you away from the kingdom of heavens. And many times I'm listening and I'm hearing some brothers of ours saying to me, Brother, do, is this allowed? And I say, And I'm saying, No, do it. And and um, they're saying to me, I'm I'm serious now. They know that's why they're asking, is this allowed? And I'm saying to them, let me tell you something. And I'm gonna tell you this simply. Do it. Are you risking it? Why would you risk it? Is it worth it? for you to do something that the eternal word that Christ gave us doesn't want you to do. Of course, there's some, one, there's some people that would try and mislead you. If you go along and see what is happening now, you don't want to see any of that, to be honest with you. The only thing I want to see is this gospel. How beautiful is that word? If someone sees me, I may be misjudged. I'm going to explain why. Many, many times as I'm reading the gospel, I, s I will start kissing, it, kissing the uh, the book, and I like doing it. I like the fact that I'm feeling so beautifully reading the word, but there are others that want to mislead you from this word and I'm standing amazed because you are quick to be misled to a different gospel why would I be led to a different gospel a gospel that is different to what I you received from me but even if an angel from uh, above comes down and teaches you a different gospel disregard him Can you understand what he just said? Even if I come to you and say something to you, brother, that is outside of the word of the Lord, then you need to disregard me. That's a harsh word to use. I'm not sure if you understand the depth of this word. If you don't want to do the word of the Lord and you want to put something else in the verse you're reading, I want to I want to tell you something now. There's a difference between me not wanting to do it, to do the ver what the verse is saying, because we we as Christians have sweetened out, let's say, what is sin, and we are now calling it weakness. There's no weakness. W we are all weak. No one is powerful. 
not seeing anyone here who is strong we are all weak but there is a difference between you saying that you're weak saying that you have no power and there is a difference between your sin you turning your sin into weakness and calling it your weakness there is no weakness because if you believe and you uh, accept that there is weakness you immediately have to accept that there is a God that is powerful to save you from and make you strong but the gospel is the power of the Lord and what is happening now as I said before says Apostle Paul I'm saying again to you if someone is preaching a different gospel than the one you receive let him be disregarded because am I trying to convince people or Christ am I am I trying to be nice to people or look good f for people because even if I did I wouldn't be looking nice to God and I want to say this as I'm finishing that all of us have this opportunity in our spiritual ways and path to live with Christ and I'm gonna tell you all I'm gonna propose to you all to experience the gospel so that there is no way for you to be driven away and for you to say why did I do this why would I leave Christ for you to have remorse because you left Christ but rather live and experience the word of the Lord so that you may be underneath the love of Christ I am under the light of the Lord I am under the supervision of the Lord I am in his boundaries and he's glad and he is the one who is taking on and he is the one taking and manage manages my life and if you leave him then you're managing your own life and therefore you have a responsibility of your own life and it's not worth it let us therefore have Christ with us and maybe a day will come as Apostle Paul says for us to finish this struggle and fight of course it will come for you to finish your path and the point here is for you to receive the righteous the reward of righteousness that was promised to you not only to me but to all peoples that have the same path and I hope that the gospel will be continuing to be edified in our hearts in the church for the Lord's name to be exalted and when all these things happen then the light the gospel is light and this light will be illuminated in this area very much so so that all other peoples can understand that this place the light e exists and the person who wants will come to search and find the true light and receive the spirit from above Amen.